Hey there, it's Jason Falls. If your company or maybe one of your clients sells to marketers, you look for advertising channels that guarantee business marketers are paying attention, right? Let me introduce you to the Marketing Podcast Network. You're listening to it right now. It's a network of podcasts all about marketing. So 100% of MPN's audience are marketers. Reach them by advertising on the Marketing Podcast Network. Learn more and find our media kit at marketingpodcasts.net. This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. In influencer marketing, and certainly in marketing overall, there are generally two types of focus. The one we talk about more often is consumer marketing, also known as business-to-consumer or B2C. Then there's business-to-business or B2B. B2B brands sell software, equipment, or services to businesses, sometimes for price tags far too high for an individual purchase. So think of complex IT systems, office equipment, construction machinery, or even professional services like legal, accounting, human resources, or even marketing agencies. B2B sales cycles are longer, sometimes in excess of 12 to 18 months. So there's a lot more for a brand to do to attract prospects, build relationships and trust with them, educate the prospect about the product, and ultimately get them to commit sometimes significant corporate dollars to pay for it. That relationship building and trust is key, and for many B2B brands, that's where influencers come in. But not Instagrammers and TikTokers, per se. B2B influencers are those that have deep knowledge and trust in very specific communities. They're often academics, industry analysts, executives, researchers, and more. Often, their influence can't be measured by their number of online followers. As such, B2B influencer marketing is often more difficult. Justin Levy is the Director of Social Media and Influencer Marketing for DemandBase. It is a company that provides software to manage the account-based experience. So think of CRM software that also ties your content marketing into the sales process. It keeps your database of prospective customers a record of all the times and ways you've communicated with them, where they are in the sales process, and then recommends the content that you should serve them next to move them along to purchase. Justin spent several years at Citrix managing the GoToMeeting and GoToWebinar social and influencer connections as well, so he has a lot of experience building B2B influencer relations. We caught up with Justin to talk about how he finds influencers for his B2B efforts, what kind of engagements he and the demand-based team engage them for, and then how his company uses content in an innovative approach to meet the prospect and other stakeholders where they are in the process. Justin gives us a good insight into how a B2B brand works and thinks of influencers. I'm sure the conversation will inform and inspire you, even if your focus is more B2C. Before we get to that, though, let's take a moment to thank our presenting sponsor, Tagger. It is a complete influencer marketing software suite that allows you to find, connect, and collaborate with influencers, execute campaigns, and measure success. But as you know, I'd rather get insight and intel from Tagger's customers about how they use the platform and influence marketing than just read off some highlights of the product. I recently caught up with Alexandra Walsh at 3 Day Blinds. We've been talking to her a lot lately. They provide consulting and products in the premium custom window treatments category. Alexandra and I chatted about how she uses Tagger. Tell me what KPIs you guys look for in terms of your influencer marketing programs. What are the most important metrics that three day blinds finds effective to uh, to measure? We're not an e commerce company, but we do it all through our free and home consultations. So the design co consultant has to come out to you. So what we really want to see is this authentic experience of having a design consultant in your home and how easy it is to create one this relationship with your designer and these new beautiful window treatments. So we want to see the authentic experience. And then every single influencer we work with has a unique link where that we can track on our end. And then they also will get a discount code to offer their followers. 
And then we can see how many sales and how many appointments and the appointments for us are really important in the marketing team. So we want to see how many appointments the influencers get. But then on top of that, do we get more followers on Instagram? What's the engagement like on the posts? Do we get engagement on our own social media? Do How many link clicks are we getting? As well as uh, we ask for exclusive images from all of the influencers because we can't do as many photo shoots right now. And if we can get more beauty photography out of this, that's great. Thanks to Alexandra and 3 Day Blinds for sharing their use of Tagger. To learn more and get a demo to see if Tagger is right for you, just visit jason.online slash tagger today. That's jason.online slash tagger. How do you find B2B influencers and what do you do with them? Justin Levy of Demand Based is next on Winfluence. Hey there, it's Jason Falls. If your company or maybe one of your clients sells to marketers, you look for advertising channels that guarantee business marketers are paying attention, right? Let me introduce you to the Marketing Podcast Network. You're listening to it right now. It's a network of podcasts all about marketing. So 100% of MPN's audience are marketers. Reach them by advertising on the Marketing Podcast Network. Learn more and find our media kit at marketingpodcasts.net. So Justin, you and I go, we're, we're OGs. We go back to the, uh, the early days of the social media when people went to things like blog world and, and, uh, all that good stuff. Um, you, you've had this really interesting kind of roller coaster of, of a career. Um, and now you're at, um, you know, probably one of the, you know, top emerging, you know, sort of B2B companies demand base. Tell me a little bit about demand base and what you do there so people can understand the context of the conversation. Yeah. So demand base is a, a B2B firm. Like you said, it, uh, you know, what we do is provide account based experience uh, software for companies. Other people know that as account based marketing software, but we kind of have seen it take that next step. You know, ABX is the evolution of uh, ABM and really into go to market. So it's not now just pocketed even in ABX, it's really in kind of go to market uh, for B2B. Um, and then my role is that I'm the director of social and influencer marketing. So that includes all of our social campaigns, influencer marketing campaigns, and uh, being part of private communities uh, to kind of be a resource to, to other folks within those communities. And that's part of a broader content team. So when I started uh, nine months ago, as of this recording, uh, both my VP and I started within the same week. There is one person on our content team, and now we have about 15 wow. in nine months. That's tremendous growth internally uh, from a resource perspective, but good for you. So, so for the people out there who are listening, who are either B2C or maybe the influencers that are out there listening to kind of try to get something out of this, account-based marketing, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I don't have a whole, uh, you know, a, a deep B2B ex level of experience, at least on the services side. Um, so account-based marketing, basically what you guys try to do or what you guys do is provide software for, I would think essentially sales teams to try and kind of work that lead funnel, right? Let's fill the top of the funnel with leads. And then your software helps the sales teams manage the, 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 the journey of that particular lead through the funnel. Is that basically what you guys do? That's part of it. One of the other pieces certainly is to help uh, provide content at the right time for salespeople, right? So instead of just any piece of content that your company uh, might have created, it all of us know that it's not necessarily the right time when you get served that piece of content. So that's to allow the salespeople uh, to find the relevant content that we may have and serve that to the customer at the right time as they are moving through that funnel. So, I mean, super smart, obviously, you know, a software like that for those people who don't know for a salesperson who's trying to, you know, manage, you know, hundreds of, of, of accounts or hundreds of leads to try to get them in, it, you know, as Justin said, when you're trying to, you know, you've got somebody who went in the system, let's say on December 1st, 
Well, there's a cadence to which, you know, your analytics tell you if you reach out via email on December 2nd, and then you call them on December 4th, and then you send them this little introductory guide white paper on December 10th, et cetera, there's a cadence that your analytics tells you this is going to increase the likelihood that you're going to be able to close this account. And so the software basically makes it easier for salespeople to understand what to send and where. So now my next question for you then, Justin, is your influencer marketing efforts, which is obviously what we're more keenly interested uh, in here on Winfluence, you have to find people who are B2B influencers, people who influence sales folks. How do you do that? Who are these people? How do you find them? Well, I would say, you know, if you zoom out a bit, it's both B2B sales folks and B2B marketing, right? Because you have the two sides of the house because we do market to marketers, but we do believe that there are two sides of the house, right? Sale marketing helps sales. So uh, on the B2B, kind of on the marketing side, we are looking for individuals that uh, you know, go across that entire kind of area. So not just say B2B social media influencers, though they are a part of it because we know that they have reach, right, and resonance. But people that are, for example, in market and operations, because they are, the, you know, pro- some of the primary users of the tool. On the B2B sales side, you might have uh, individuals that are thought leaders in rev ops or rev- revenue operations. So we, we, look at that entire kind of portfolio of individuals in the communities that they're part of and, you know, the people that they may be influencing. Some of them are uh, members of other big companies, right? So uh, there's a gentleman that we've done work with who runs a global market and ops for a, a kind of name brand company that everyone would recognize, right? And, other people, but then you also get into those really small micro influencers as well. So you mentioned earlier, and I would imagine in the B2B space um, that this uh, comes to play a heck of a lot more than it does in B2C, I think. And that is, you know, sort of the private communities, uh, I would think LinkedIn groups, things like that, maybe some other forums and message boards where you're also trying to participate as a company. Is it to the point now to where you're finding people who are influential in those private communities and partnering with them, or you're trying to be a part of that community yourself or both? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's interesting. I had posted something about this last week or the week before on LinkedIn. You know, we tend to forget a lot of people think that LinkedIn groups were the first communities or what have you for people that have been around for a minute, you know, hey, we had AOL communities and, <laughs> yeah. you know, people could argue that AIM was a community because everyone cared about people's away messages and what have you and Yahoo groups and so on and so forth. But you know, these communities that have started to kind of stand up these days, uh, most of them, the easiest kind of form is a Slack group, right? Like a private Slack community. And then obviously they can grow to actual platforms, the, the true platforms that exist out there. And everything from free to paid, everything from, you know, free to paid and then different levels of paid depending on where you sit within an org CMO, you know, all the way down to a IC. Um, And these communities, you can do, if you're doing it kind of correctly, you're going in there to be a member of the community. You're not going in there to pitch your stuff. You're going in there to be part of it because you have an expertise in the area that that you are in B2B marketing or marketing ops or rev ops or what have you, and to be helpful. But of course, you carry your personal brand and the brand of your company in there, and you can develop relationships with people. So there are multiple people within these communities that I either already had a relationship with and that carries over into these communities or that I've started a relationship with and has bounced out into connecting on LinkedIn or over quick Zoom calls. And, you know, those are relationships that will are kind of budding and and will become something maybe broader in the longer term. 
It sounds to me like if I'm a B2B influence marketing specialist, if you will, and I want to really identify the people who are truly influential, and this is where I get really excited about talking about B2B stuff because we're not talking about the um, TikTok and Instagram and, you know, and even Facebook, you know, a world of I can go into a database and type in a keyword and here's, you know, 500 influencers that I can go through. It seems to me like you're you're really getting into the, you know, sort of granularity of finding people who are actually influential. And it doesn't have anything to do with what social network they're on. It doesn't have anything to do with how many followers they they have, which I think makes identifying these people more challenging, right? It certainly can. There is a lot of manual research. Um, you know, we're partnered with uh, Analytica. So, you know, we, we do have some scale using their tool. Uh, but uh, to actually go in and understand the types of conversations they're having with who and consistency and platforms and things like that. You know, when I first walked into the position and, and, you know, we're trying to kind of create what we are going to do. Most of the people that I know today, I didn't know before then, you know, I could give you a list of all the social influencers that we can pay or, or kind of, or reach out to and, you know, give us reach and they'll give us everything that comes along with their social platforms. But to really get in there and build relationships with those people that have five or 10,000 or even 20,000 followers on, say, LinkedIn, you really had to find them. And then not for nothing, you have to take advantage of LinkedIn's algorithm by staying engaged so that then you can continue to be part of those broader conversations. So it, it does require some work. And that's why it's uh, part of a kind of a main part of uh, one position, you know, part of a team. Well, and you mentioned Analytica. We've talked about them. We've interviewed Tim Williams and 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 a couple of other folks from Analytica on the show before. And I know they have really carved out a nice niche for themselves as a B2B influencer marketing sort of specialty software and services company. Um, and I know they also have, I know that I've been talking to them about doing a little bit more content here on the show around my Analytica, which is their sort of B2B marketplace where B2B influencers can go and do a profile and all that stuff, which you guys may or may not be using. But I wonder, you know, how awesome is it in the world today that there is a, an Analytica out there that is a B2B scalable solution for, for B2B influencers? I mean, you look at all of the influencer marketing platforms out there and you're like, well, yeah, that's great, but it doesn't do any good. And now here's one that does. That's got to be pretty cool. Yeah, it's great because, you know, one of the things that we have as a set goal on our team is to continually grow our data, kind of our database, right? So, yes, Analytica has this huge scale to it and its marketplace. Um, but, you know, we want a subsection of that for us. So obviously we have our own built out custom lists and their team really helps to do some additional research, but um, that does help or, and their team helps us to build and construct what our list needs to be or this smaller list that then I can go where someone on our team can go and interact with or go actually look at their content live. Very cool. So I wonder the partnerships that you're developing there with the uh, B2B influencers that um, that demand base is working with, what types of content partnerships are you are you working out? I mean, when I think of B2B influencer marketing, I think you're going to engage somebody to write a white paper or a report, or you're going to do a webinar or seminar with them, something like that online. But what are all the different types of, of partnerships that you are looking to develop? So luckily for us, for own content, we have a we have our own blog, which is kind of standard for most companies these days. But we also have a podcast that we have, you know, we have at our disposal. To your point, you have infographics and ebooks and and kind of all those sort of avenues that if you, you can ask someone if they want to be a quote on or whatnot. But you know, one of our primary tools that we have now is uh, called DVTV. And 
we launched that uh, over the summertime. And when we launched, we launched it with 75 videos on it. So it wasn't even something where we said, oh, you know, come the fall or come next year, we'll have th these videos. We had already uh, working with our internal influencers and external influencers recorded 75 videos. So on day one, we had all this live. Um, so one that helped with going out and developing some relationships. But currently, when we go to talk to people and you know have an upcoming program or you know just want to continue developing relationships from a co-created perspective. We have all of these different platforms that we can offer up to them on their behalf, right? And, you know, do you want to write a blog post? And we have an editor that will help you uh, kind of guide you down our process. Do you want to record a video interview? We have five or six different formats, including one that I can send a link to them. And at their convenience, they can record their interview. And we have, a, you know, video editors that can kind of make it all pretty and whatnot and we publish it that you know obviously the podcast and we have all these different forms of content that we can help publish out through our channels beyond you know obviously you can go look at when when proper paid opportunities and uh you know taking it kind of taking advantage of their platforms when kind of relevant for the right situation well, I love the, I mean, I'm just, as we're talking here, I'm looking at the DBTV page on your, on your website. And I love the fact this is a great idea for you companies out there, especially in the B2B space, but maybe in others um, where you're trying to, you know, take this, you know, new mediums of content like a podcast or, you know, live streams or video interviews and, and produce content out of it. What you guys, Justin, have done at Vanbase, you've got, DBTV, but it basically has different channels. You've got, you know, the basically the ABX, the AB experience, the account based experience. You've got why we choose demand base, which is a good, you know, ratings and review kind of type content that's great for uh, your your business purposes. Um, you've got a thought leadership series called I'm Thinking of. You've got DB on demand, uh, which is, you know, how uh, demand base is changing the B2B landscape. So very product centric there. You've got what customer success really looks like, DB on DB, which is internal. But you've got this sunny side up thing, which is kind of your sort of, I think, more not consumer facing, but your prospect facing uh, where you're interviewing thought leaders and whatnot about hot topics in the industry, not necessarily product focus, but community focus. So you've broken this deep concept of B DBTV up into different channels that serve different segments, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And so and you hit it right on the head. So. Like you said, we have the kind of customer testimonial focused stuff, the how to use our, you know, our product and we kind of drink our own champagne, you know, and we have our kind of marketing ops people on there. But then the thought leadership stuff, like I'm thinking of five questions for, um, we have the sales angle. So we have, uh, it's all B2B to me, um, where we have a couple folks from our sales side of the house, you know, do crazy stuff like jump out of airplanes to describe our four clouds and hire, create custom wraps and whatnot around sales related topics. And, uh, but then, yeah, like the sunny side up is our podcast, 200 plus episodes. Uh, and what they have done is, so they came over as part of an acquisition we made uh, in 2021 and they carry with them sales pipeline. So they, as part of their outreach and their team, uh, what they do, the podcast team, they actually carry us a, a sales pipeline number uh, just as part of their strategy. So we have all these formats, you know, that you can, whether it's video or uh, the podcast, whether it's obviously the, the blog and whatnot, but you can see, you can watch whether that is demand focused content, whether it is customer testimonials, which is something that a lot of brands have. But if we also have that thought leadership, fun, you know, the fun content, uh, all the other pieces to really make it a true on demand experience. 
Well, and it's really smart too, because I think a lot of people will throw all that type of content together into one channel, um, which serves all the audiences a little bit of the time. What you guys have done is separated out to serve a very specific audience all the time with their specific channel, which is super smart. You've got stuff there for the light prospect that might one day, uh, you know, come to demand base, but is uh, interested in the content you're producing. You've got content there for the people who are in the sales funnel trying to consider what you're doing. And then certainly you've got the thought leadership stuff that really, I think, bridges those relationships with the partners that you want to have long term. So super smart content strategy. And then I would imagine most, if not all of these channels uh, are some sort of avenue where you're going to engage B2B influencers to either be interviewed or provide content, et cetera, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. And it also, again, serves the sales team too, right? And I've had, I and my VP have had uh, multiple people within our sales work reach out and say, we see that you had this video interview with this person, we're trying to get into that account, or we're trying to get to that person, would you make an introduction? Or this this person that this prospect or customer we have actually would be interested in doing a video, what, what do you think? And it might not just be a customer success video. It might be a thought leadership level video, but... Um, and then, you know, the other thing we do is if you go in and kind of watch the videos, they're all snackable. Nothing is something really long with the exception of uh, when we produce LinkedIn lives, we kind of just repurpose them for on demand content uh, and put them on DVTV. So those are naturally 30 minutes long or so. But uh, we want someone to be able to come in, watch something for three or four minutes, have some fun or learn something and kind of get back to their day. That's fantastic. Well, for the the people out there who are in uh, either the B2B space or you're some sort of salesperson or sales function, uh, you know, where you have that sort of account-based approach, uh, demandbase.com is the place to go. And you can look under resources for DBTV. We'll make sure the links to that and all that good stuff are in the show notes. Uh, Justin, I know you've uh, just moved back across country uh, to Connecticut from California. Uh, When I first met you there, you were I think you were managing a steakhouse, weren't you? Yeah, so I had kind of double duties. I was uh, <laughs> working with a mutual friend of ours, Chris Brogan. Yeah. Um, and kind of part-time, I was driving up to uh, Massachusetts, or I was living in Massachusetts and driving uh, out to another town to help uh, the best man at my wedding um, manage a, res- a restaurant and a steakhouse he owned and bring in at that time because social, it wasn't called social media and every one of these social networks that most people never heard of were in play. Um, try to figure out how to use these tools to make the restaurant successful because the food quality was where it needed to be, but the sales numbers weren't. And so you know, we did some things uh, immediately, you know, changed, redid the website. So it was SEO friendly. I started a third party blog um, and then did things like launch a YouTube channel and, and start to play with different things to see what would stick. And the restaurants kind of turned around and became one of the best steakhouses in Western Mass. And that uh, turned out with uh, you, me, and Chris going for a, a custom tour through Maker's Mark. Yeah, yeah. So f- for those out there who are the creators in the crowd, Justin, you know, really came to bear uh, on the social media industry by creating content for a brand, for a business. And, you know, I got noticed and and uh, Chris Brogan obviously was one of the, I think, one of the sort of pioneering thought leaders in the social media ethos back in the day, mid-2000s. And he and Justin got connected and were, you know, partners and colleagues and whatnot for a while. And uh, that's kind of how Justin got. And then you wound up at Citrix and then you wound up, now you're at demand. I mean, you've just been all over the place and it all started from creating content online. Yeah. Well, Citrix was the first client of the agency that Chris and I uh, had launched. And so they were the first client among others, you know, after that, but they told me once that, hey, when you're ready to, you know, move 
So the brand side will create a position for you and that kind of, you know, all then continued my career. That, that tour of uh, Maker's Mark comes up at least a couple times a year. Uh, Chris and I talk every now and then, and either I'll be on his show or he'll be on mine or we'll be at a conference somewhere. And, and, uh, I, I will, I will, I will self-congratulate a little bit here because I was, I didn't really know what the hell I was doing back then, but I knew that my client at Maker's Mark wanted to get more people online talking about them. And so I got really deeply involved in the blogging PR world, social media world. And Chris at the time was kind of the man in social media. And so, uh, you were working with him at that point. And so I reached out, made a relationship with Chris, ended up meeting you. We ended up hanging out together. And then I had you guys come down to Louisville for an event. And while you were there, we went down to Laredo out in the middle of nowhere and uh, and did the tour. Um, ironically enough, when we did that tour, Denny Potter was the uh, assistant uh, master. The, the, he, he was the assistant master distiller at the time. After that, he went to two other places and he's now back as the master distiller at Maker's Mark. So you actually did the tour with the current Maker's Mark master distiller, which was pretty cool. But I'll, I'll self-congratulate a little bit because if anything, that little action, you know, working together with a really in a B2B influencer marketing way back then for me, uh, got Maker's Mark talked about by Chris Brogan on Twitter a lot and Justin Levy on Twitter a lot too. So it did I, don't know well. you, I don't know if you remember. So back then, Chris was, you know, publishing two to three, if not more blog posts a day, because that's just how his mind was uh, working at that time, just with how much he cranked. Um, and we were in, uh, I was in the pasture seat of your car. He was in the back seat. And he was like crunched up, could barely fit, but he had his laptop in some weird way still typing every minute that we're on the road. So, um, yeah, we've had interesting times together, uh, usually involving Chris somewhere. Yeah. It's either involving Chris or bourbon or both, which is always a good time for me. <laughs> and I have, I may or may not for your listeners have a, a picture of you wearing a go to meet in Snuggie. Oh or yeah. One. Yeah. I remember that. I do have a good, uh, and I may still have that Snuggie actually come to think of it. But yeah, wearing a go to meeting Snuggie. And I think I think there's a picture somewhere of us at uh, a pool party in Vegas. And I think I have half a bourbon like on my shirt. Like it's like dripping down my shirt. So we've had some good that times. That was that blog world. It was a long time ago, back in the day. Well, I look forward to us getting together in person again uh, after all this COVID nonsense gets out of the way. Um, and congratulations on everything you're doing at Demand Base. Where can people find you? And demand base on the interwebs. So pretty easy. Demand base is at demand base anywhere's on the interwebs. Uh, and for me, Justin Levy, any anywhere you can uh, find me. Very good, Justin. Man, thanks for uh, catching up with me. Good to see. Uh, good to see you back home in Connecticut. And uh, look forward to raising a glass soon. Absolutely. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is presented by my book. Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. Hey, it's Seth from Entrepreneurs Enigma here on the Marketing Podcast Network. I know you're enjoying your current show, so I won't keep you too long. I just wanted to tell you about my show. Every week, I interview entrepreneurs from all types of industries about their entrepreneurial journey. No two journeys are the same, and my goal is to highlight the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur from a wide variety of perspectives. Learn more and subscribe at entrepreneursenigma.com. See you there. 
This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.